Welcome to the Commonwealth Matters. I'm your host, Richard Nelson. Joining us today is State Senator Robbie Mills to talk about campaigns and running for office. Senator Mills is a member of the Kentucky State Senate, representing the 4th District, where he serves as chairman of the State and Local Government Committee. Before holding his current office, Senator Mills was a member of the Kentucky House of Representatives from the 11th District, which represented Henderson, Uh, Primarily, he also served nine terms as a city commissioner in Henderson. His experience in the private sector running New Look Cleaners and a remediation business uh, for his family business for more than 50 years. Uh, He and his wife, Vicki, are the proud parents of three and grandparents of one. Robbie, welcome to the program. (laughs) Thanks, Richard. Always a pleasure to be here. Uh, As many of our listeners know, we have been friends uh, for years. Um, Really, I think we met almost 23, 24 years ago uh, on an important issue at the local level when you were serving on city commission. And uh, we're also personal friends. You were one of the founding members of the Commonwealth Policy Center as well. Yeah, our our paths have crossed many times, and it's uh, been a pleasure to to grow with you uh, politically and intellectually and everything. It's been it's been a fun ride. Well, I agree. Uh, and I've learned a lot from you. We've we have grown together from uh, very local battles and engaging the issues there, some some okay. challenging issues, but also uh, to, to state level, state house, state senate. And of course, one thing I forgot to mention is that you were the lieutenant governor running candidate with uh, Daniel Cameron, yeah. uh, and yes. we will we will talk about that in, uh, in in just a bit. But one of the reasons why we're doing this program is that there are a lot of um, Christians and conservatives who are interested in running for office. They see what's going on in their society and in our state and country, and they want to make a difference somehow. Right. And I think that's a good thing to to want to serve and to want to be involved to make a difference. But often people don't know where to begin. They don't know, what what do I do? What's the first step I should take? Who should I call? And that's one reason why we're doing this program, to talk about um, finding a path to running an effective campaign. And I think one of the best ways to do this, and you have run for many offices. You're one of the rare people, by the way, (laughs) who has served at the local level, uh, served in the state house, state senate. You've run for statewide office, so you have... A vantage point that most people don't have, mm-hmm. and uh, we're hoping to pick your brain and learn from your experiences. Yeah, yeah. Oh, glad to be here. Yeah. So when you first ran for office, it was for city commission, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. How old were you? Uh, actually, when I was twenty-five, I ran for magistrate Did one you? time. Yeah, I forgot about and that. Uh, and and I got beat and uh, ran against uh, an older gentleman, and uh, and then. I moved on to run for city commission, and actually the first time I ran for city commission, uh, I got beat uh, in the primary, came in fifth place, and then came in fifth place again in the general election. So it was, you know, it was a learning. I actually lost, if you want to count them, three elections before I got elected. Wow. By the way, that's like Abraham Lincoln. He lost a number of times before he was ever elected. I want to talk about what you learned from losing. Mm -hmm. You were young when you ran for magistrate. What were some of the takeaways, if you can recall any, that you learned from losing in that election? Uh, Well, the one thing I remember is that uh, the the elections were close and had a lot of people encouraging me to run again. So I think that was a key to me kind of sticking with it. Uh, I'm kind of, one of the things my dad always taught taught me was just about perseverance and sticking with it. And uh, but I I remember just a lot of conversations on people's front porches or front yards, talking to them. And you know this was almost thirty years ago when when you know people were out in their yards more and people communicated more. You know campaigning has changed a lot, but uh, I remember getting bit by a dog a couple of times. <laughs> it's fun, just it? you know all of those things and uh, that that are important uh, when you're out seeing people in in a rural setting. Or in an inner city uh, setting, you know, knocking on doors and meeting folks. Now, often when somebody runs for office, regardless of what political party or what office, they run and they lose, and that's it. Yeah. It's very demoralizing. It can be very discouraging and yeah. difficult to accept rejection. 
running for office, but one of the values that was instilled in you by your dad, as he said, was perseverance, sure. being persistent. What would you say to that person who ran once, uh, they lost, and are in that camp, like, I'm never running again. Right. I, I don't want to put myself out there. It took too much of a toll on me. What would you say to them, especially if they're hearing from other people, hey, you should think about yeah, running yeah. again? I would just encourage them, you know, in general, people do not win first and move on and stay in office. In general, there are ups and downs in political campaigns, and you've got to persevere. It's it's a, you know, you need to, uh, you know, look at what you've learned, make notes, have people help you evaluate your campaign get some input from outside people, and be willing to change and learn from a loss. Robbie, that's really good because part of the um, a quality of a good candidate is that they will learn, right. win or lose, they'll learn. Right. They will uh, be teachable. They'll take a counsel and um, learn from what others around them are saying. And that takes a lot to because it's admitting that I don't know everything or I did yeah. make mistakes. But to be teachable and to receive counsel uh, is uh, is really important. important. I mean, I think, you know, when you get elected, people are going to lecture you, talk to you, and you're not always going to be right and have the answers. So I think that's something that you've got to learn along the way is, hey, I don't have all the answers. I'm here to be a representative of the people. And sometimes I learn things from the public. Most of the time I do. I'm going to bring something into this equation as well, is that when you are running for office, uh, it's like a great big job interview. It and is. it's not a normal job interview because usually a job interview is one-on-one. -on -one. You're meeting with the boss, right? right? And they're going to ask you questions behind closed doors. Yeah. But running for office is a very public job interview where your whole life is out there for the public to see. They're going to ask you questions in public forums and public settings, and you should have a response to that. Uh, but then you also, you, you find the results of that job interview on election day. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not the final word, is it? That's right. Well, That's right. the voters say, because they changed their minds. Yeah. Uh, and also, there could be a better candidate, somebody who had a better message, ran a better campaign, somebody who might have been a lot older. In your case, you, had, you ran against a guy who'd been part of the community for, That's he was, right. what, 40 years yeah. older? Than like, you, right? Yeah, he was 40 years older. He had a lot of experience. He understood what was going on in county government. And... Uh, it was, you know, it was a learning experience that I, it, I learned that I had to be more up on the issues, have more answers, and be able to explain things better than just thinking I'm going to be more popular than somebody else. What was it that prompted you to run? Uh, I think it was my mom. Mainly. My mom was like one of my biggest fans, and she was like, you really have a lot to give to the community. Why don't you get involved in the community? That's another important point is when you're running for office, there is a, a fine line between just self-promotion or I want to be somebody, I want to be in the spotlight, I want to make decisions. And we've both have seen that. It's very clear to voters. We've seen that yeah. uh, in every election you see that. But there's a fine line between that and somebody who really does want to serve, somebody who has a skill set and a heart for their community. Robbie, tell us how important that is to be involved with your community and to show the voters that you've yeah. already been involved. Well, there's just no way to represent uh, a county or multiple counties without knowing what's going on and who the leaders are in the county right now. What are the issues that are driving voters? You know, where taxpayer money is being spent, maybe where it's not being spent well. Uh, what the uh, moral compass is, what's going on culturally. Uh, in your community. You need to understand that and know about that and have enough intellect to talk about that with neighbors. It's not just a popularity contest. You have to understand what's going on around you, but then you've got to present it in a way that uh, endears you to people and right. makes people like you. Robbie, uh, we've known each other for a long time, and I remember being in Henderson, meeting with you, and we went to a local diner uh, to get a bite to eat. And one thing that stood out to me, and this is when you were on city commission, was we went into this diner and um, people knew you. Hey, Robbie, how you doing? Uh, Robbie, come on, I got something to say to you. And I, I was very impressed by that, that you went into a public place, people knew you, they smiled at you, they wanted to know uh, how you were doing. And uh, the reason why that's important is because you do need to, people need to know you, you need to be involved with your mm -hmm. community, you need to be present. Yep. 
right? Yep. I mean, I, even before I ran for city commission, kind of around the time I was running for magistrate, I was on the city board of zoning and adjustment. I was on the city planning commission. Mm-hmm. Those two organizations helped me realize what was going on in the community. I asked the mayor to appoint me to those commissions. Uh, he saw that I showed up every time I had something to give to the community and that, that built slowly built support, community support for my name. And I had some name recognition that way. So, you know, it's not always that flash in the pan candidate that all of a sudden shows up. I mean, there's a lot of work and a lot of prep work that if you want to take being a candidate seriously, that you have to do. And one of the things is, you know, your candidate training is, uh, is, is, and not, not only just one candidate training or another, you've got to, you know, read up, uh, and be prepared if you're going to take uh, being a candidate serious. This is one of the things we do talk about at Commonwealth Policy Center's candidate training is to be involved with your community, mm-hmm. to uh, participate in the various um, community organizations, whether it's on the planning and zoning board or other nonprofits, right. um, volunteering at the YMCA to coach soccer or being a Sunday school teacher at your church, a good candidate will always show that they have an interest and are willing to participate in their community. I think one of the shortfalls in the conservative movement is that, well, there's there's a couple, but one is that we react. We see an issue that comes up, and we have a strong conviction and a strong opinion on that issue, and then we want to get involved and run for office. Um, the other shortfall, though, is that we're just not involved with our communities like we should be. Mm-hmm. Good com- candidates right. will be involved with their community. Um, so, Robbie, the Commonwealth Policy Center candidate training is coming up on February 2nd and 3rd uh, in Frankfurt. This right. is a two-day training. The first day of training will focus on issues, how to think through important issues of the day. The second day of the training is nuts and bolts of how to run an effective campaign, how to raise money, how to put together your campaign team, how to file your CREF reports, how to message. All of these areas will be covered by various trainers from across the state. And uh, this is something you've participated in as well, haven't you? I have. I've, I've been a student and, uh, and a speaker at these, and uh, uh, I've learned a lot. I mean, you really do a great job. Your organization does a great job of bringing, you know, what I would consider experts in the field of campaigns. And uh, it's a it's two days that are that are a great investment, not only in your campaign, but just you personally. I think there's a lot of personal growth that occurs uh, when you listen and you develop uh, your character. Uh, there's a lot of hard things that you have to do as a candidate. I mean, nobody is comfortable in asking your friend for money, and but it does take money to get yourself out, uh, out there. So, uh, you know, nobody likes making hard decisions, but there are hard decisions that you have to make on the campaign trail. And, uh, this training helps you, uh, you know, know how to make those tough decisions, uh, gives you the lingo and the, uh, the thought process of how to raise money, how to have a fundraiser, how to put, uh, your, uh, media together. Uh, it's just very good, uh, training, uh, for somebody that, uh, is ready to, you know, feels called to be a candidate, but just needs to maybe even knock a little rust off. Maybe an older candidate that hadn't run in a while. Uh, it, this candidate training does all of that. It it does. Thank you for that, Robbie. And you are going to be presenting at our upcoming candidate training in Frankfurt. Again, it's February 2nd and 3rd. And you're going to be on a panel, by the way. You didn't know this yet. <laughs> With another uh, legislator, me. and we're going to. Uh, I'll have. Uh, we'll have a Q and A time where I'll ask yeah. about different things of your uh, candidacy and lessons you've learned on the campaign trail. And uh, I, I do want to go back to that to talking about defeat on the campaign trail. And I've had an experience to uh, run for office. I've actually won a couple times. I've lost once. And uh, I'll tell you this, it's much better to win. It's a much better feeling (laughs) when you win than when you lose. But there's a lot to learn when you lose. And one of the things I want to go back to is that, of course, Commonwealth Policy Center is a faith-based organization. Mm -hmm. We approach public policy from a biblical worldview, a Christian perspective. And one of the things I talk about is calling to run for Mm -hmm. office having the right motivations, understanding your values and principles. You alluded to you know, understand what you'll fight for yeah. when you're in office. 
But here's another important aspect, and this is a very difficult aspect. It's that how is God shaping you through this process? Even through a defeat, you can often learn more in a defeat than you can in a victory. And this is something that uh, every candidate, especially if they identify as a Christian, they should be willing to uh, accept the results of what the voters are saying. But uh, but also the bigger question is how is God shaping you? Uh, whatever the results are at the end of that um, that election, uh, that is not the final word on you. But it's something that a mature Christian should continue to ask: is how is God shaping me? Maybe I've learned a lot from this campaign. Maybe I can be a better candidate for that next race that I run. And uh, I cannot uh, cannot emphasize that enough. Hi, my name is Richard Nelson, founder and executive director of the Commonwealth Policy Center. We're here to shore up the sanctity of human life, religious freedom, natural marriage, and sound fiscal policies. At the Commonwealth Matters, we have conversations with leading thinkers and policymakers to help us think biblically about the great issues of the day. If you appreciate our work, then please consider a donation today. This work is entirely supported by people just like you. Your gifts and tax-deductible contributions help to underwrite this program, and you help to get this important message out all across the Commonwealth. We believe that the Commonwealth of Kentucky is a great place to live, and we want to keep it that way for our families and our children. That's why we're standing for what's right, for what's good, and what's true right here in Kentucky. Thanks in advance for your support, and may God bless you. If you're just joining us, you're listening to the Commonwealth Matters. I'm Richard Nelson here with State Senator and former Lieutenant Governor candidate Robbie Mills, and we are talking about campaigns and elections and uh, candidate uh, training, which is coming up soon, February the 2nd and 3rd. Uh, We will have a candidate training in Frankfurt with a host of trainers and speakers from across not just Kentucky, but from across the country, coming to help conservative candidates run effective campaigns. For more information, you can go to commonwealthpolicycenter.org. That's commonwealthpolicycenter.org. You can learn more about the training, and you can sign up and register there as well. Robbie, I want to talk about um, some of the differences between running a local race, state house and senate race, and then a statewide race. And again, you have run for, for all three um, levels of government, state, local, and then yeah. uh, I guess regional and then state. Uh, but what are, I guess, what are some of the major differences between running, a, let's just keep it to a commissioner, a local race, uh-huh. and a state legislative race? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people think that, that, that it's all about issues and understanding issues, but ultimately, you're trying to endear yourself to the public, and and it, there is a, a sense of of uh, of connecting with the voters and making sure that you're talking about what the voter wants to talk about. So on a local level, uh, you're talking about even issues that are even closer to home. Like you know, we've had issues in my area about coal mine coal mines opening up, uh, a Walmart expansion. Those are the the small issues, but when you address those issues correctly and you endear a certain group of people in your community to like you, that slowly builds support to where you can start talking about more, you know, higher level principles like, you know, how do we spend our money? Where are we going to invest in the future for our community? Uh, How should the state be spending their money? Should teachers get pay raises? Should state workers get pay raises? How much money is enough? You know, those are all the things that, so you start at a lower level kind of a personal level, and your issues kind of build as you move from a city commission or magistrate race to a a state representative race. But the interesting thing is, is that every state representative has to run every two years and connect back with their community and touch base with them, and their community holds them accountable for what they voted for. So ultimately, it comes down to connecting with people and being close to on the same level on uh, important issues of the day in your community. And those issues might be different in Western Kentucky yeah. than they are in Eastern Kentucky or Northern Kentucky. And you've got to, you know, you live there in that community. You've got to understand the changing winds 
of the issues that are driving voters' concerns. That's a, a really good point. And Robbie, uh, the issues are different across uh, the state, and they're different uh, from community to community. Uh, you'd mentioned, though, that you need to find, you need to endear yourself to the voters, yeah. and you need to connect with a certain segment of the voters. That means that there's a certain segment that you're not connecting with. That's right. So it takes discernment, doesn't it? Yes. And wisdom as to who do I connect with? How do you How do you go about doing that? Well, you know, you have conversations with people and, you know, you have some wisdom. And, you know, one of the things I do is I try not to argue with people. I mean, I try to, you know, you know we, it's okay to disagree and we can uh, civilly disagree and not be upset. Now, the, you know, the era of social media has really got, you know, makes people really brave to get behind their keyboard and say <laughs> something and poke at you. But uh, the truth of the matter is, is that, uh, you know, you've got to, have some discernment and realize when you're connecting with somebody, then that's the time to ask them for their vote, for their support, and even ask, you know, hey, can you help influence your family or church members that you go to church with for me? And that's how you slowly build a, a, a group of supporters that will help you get elected. Robbie, you ran for lieutenant governor with uh, Daniel Cameron. Uh, unfortunately, he came up a little short. What were some of the major takeaways in running a statewide race? Yeah. Whole different ball game there, isn't it? It is. I mean, the the biggest issue is just time and money, mm-hmm. and uh, you know you cannot cover four point whatever million people in Kentucky, and uh, it's it's figuring out how to connect with people and how to best use your time, and uh, it's it's a, a huge undertaking, uh, a lot of concerns out there in Kentucky. And, you know, government can't solve everything. And But when you're out there talking to people, they want answers and they want solutions. And, uh, you know, it was it was great to see the, and, and learn how Kentucky is so different from one end to the other. I met a lot of really good folks and have had a lot of feedback. And, uh, you know, sometimes you learn uh, more, like you said, from a defeat than you do uh, from a, from a win. You know, one of the things I think uh, Daniel and I did and the campaign did is, you know, we help focus uh, the campaign on some issues uh, and, uh, you know, and made the governor talk about some issues that he was a little uncomfortable talking about uh, through the campaign. And I think that was a victory, too. Uh, But all in all, uh, it was a great, uh, a great experience. Uh, I'm not sure I'll do it again, but, uh, you know, I feel like that we've, uh, you know, where I'm at in the Senate. There's quite a bit of influence and a lot of work that can be done there as well. But Daniel is a great candidate. Can't wait to vote for him again. I'm uh, relatively sure he'll be back on the campaign trail at some point, and I look forward to supporting him for sure. Running a state legislative race or a statewide race means that there are, of course, economic issues, Mm -hmm. and then there's social issues, which did play big in this governor's race, didn't they? They did. Uh, how do you prioritize economic versus social issues in your campaign platform? Yeah, well, you know, I feel like that uh, God has called me to be in this office, and uh, so uh, that really puts me talking about uh, social issues on an equal basis as economic issues. But I think there is a balance there. I mean, people, uh, not only do people call you to be, to talk about social issues if you're in office, but we've got to balance the budget. We've got to get people paid. We've got to, uh, you know, we've got to run our state responsibly. So it is a balancing issue, but uh, I do look at social issues as as important as economic issues. Now, some people uh, may look at economic issues more important than social issues, and just the opposite. So I think when you when you spend too much time on one or the other in a state representative or a senator's position. Uh, you you start to get in trouble, and uh, but I'm not afraid to talk about social issues. I'm I, you know I've been outspoken on uh, trans issues that we've been talking about for the last couple of years on LGBTQ uh, issues. Really been talking about those for over 25 years, and uh, uh, the sanctity of life. Uh, been talking about that for the last 30 years as well. Those issues we've made some advancements, <laughs> and now we're we've got some more challenges in front of us. And I think it's important for us to uh, don't get weary talking about them, but have a good balance in managing our commonwealth and keeping our culture 
balanced as well. Robbie, that's a good word. And I've seen you carry socially important uh, legislation in the Senate and in the House, for that matter, pro-life bills, yeah. the, the Fairness in Women's Sports Act, uh, pushing back against gender ideology in the public schools. And one thing I've noticed is how you are very careful when you proceed on these issues. You're thoughtful, you're mm-hmm. careful, you're really not out there beating a drum, if you will, right. on these issues. And uh, I'm curious, as part of this, the behind the scenes discussions that you're having, yeah. tell us about how important that is to yeah. maybe be behind the scenes and to do more work there than out front and in front of the cameras. Yeah. Uh, my philosophy is is really, you know, to work on things and build relationships before you start doing social media interviews and ranting on Twitter or whatever. I mean, you just don't accomplish uh, and govern well when all you do is make big explosive comments and yeah. then you haven't done the 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 back work. Uh, relationships are everything in government, and I really put a lot of effort into developing those with my friends and some of my foes. Yeah, and I think that served you well. It has. It has. It's helped me pass bills, and it's helped me be effective uh, in uh, the job that I'm in. Robbie, I'd like to talk about how you deal with the criticisms that you get, and you've gotten plenty in statewide news media, especially over social issues. But when you have a, let's say, for example, an unfair opinion piece or a column uh, against you that doesn't is not fair, or is not representing you well, how do you go about, and we've talked about those behind the yeah. scenes, how do you go about addressing that when you have, let's say, a journalist who's misrepresenting who you are and yeah. what you're doing? Yeah. Uh, you know, I have, I have called journalists in the past and just said, hey, you know, you know, I feel like this was uh, not a complete depiction of my position. And, and they, when you do that, a lot of times they'll allow you to comment back and give you time to correct uh, what you think was misrepresented. Uh, other times I've, uh, you know, basically not allowed a reporter to report and do an interview with me anymore or for a while. And uh, it's just, but I think you have to have wisdom in how yeah. you report. And you have to realize too that our mass media is really kind of tilted uh, to the left a little bit. And we have to address them that way. We do, and that's a that's a good word. So what I'm hearing you say is that you're keeping your composure. You're not <laughs> yep. getting angry. You're not going to Twitter no, <laughs> and unloading. No, no. Speak about social media for a yeah. candidate and um, a lot of hot issues yeah. that are um, hot button issues it might not be reported fairly. How should a candidate look at social media? I think it. I think social media should be a way to inform your constituents. And I think that before you go and talk about something that could be explosive. You need to give it time to breathe and you need to maybe even jot it down in a document and then come back and read it again before you make a post. Uh, you know, too many people make mistakes of just getting on their keyboard and saying something and they regret it. And, and that is, that is not leadership. Uh, that doesn't move, uh, the ball down the field and what you're trying to accomplish and creates more obstacles in the future. So social media has completely changed uh, politics and the way we campaign and the way we communicate. And I think as leaders in our uh, society, we need to be careful how we use that. That's good. And of course, as I think as a rule of thumb that we need to be cautious, careful, like you're saying, come back with a measured response at some point. Robbie, we are running out of time here. I want to talk about the difference between, uh, an, an important question, the difference between the arenas of elections and campaigning and governing. Yeah. The two very different arenas. How do you approach that, especially as a conservative candidate? How do you approach each arena? I mean, you know, as a conservative, we want to succeed and we want to govern well. Mm-hmm. Uh, governing well requires you to make tough decisions, have relationships, discuss things, and ha- and have a vote. Uh, when uh, you campaign, when you're campaigning, sometimes you're staking out a ground on an issue, and it becomes kind of a conflict. Governing. We've got to work Democrats together, Democrats, Republicans together, and come up with a solution that's best for our state. So, uh, once you get elected, you've got to govern, and uh, uh, that requires caution. That requires uh, that requires communication. That requires relationships. Those are all the things that, when you're maturing as a leader, you've got to develop. And uh, I enjoy doing that. And I think you see that people that succeed in the state house, people that succeed. On statewide level, they know how to make relationships. They're not 
you know, what we would call bomb throwers that are out there just, you know, getting clicks on social media. They're interested in what's best for Kentucky. How do we move Kentucky forward? How do we make this a great place to raise and uh, have our children uh, go to school and raise a family? That's good. That's a good uh, word to end on. And if you're thinking of running for office or what's involved with a winning campaign, please join us at our candidate training in Frankfurt, February 2nd and 3rd. More information can be found at our website, commonwealthpolicycenter.org. It's just the name of our group with a .org at the end. You can find out more about the training and how to register at that website. Robbie, thank you so much for joining us. Great interview. And if you like this program, please go to your favorite podcast platform, rate us there, and then after that, tell your friends about us and tell them to listen to us at The Commonwealth Matters. Thank you. If you've enjoyed this program and would like to hear the full length, then please go to your favorite podcast platform and sign up for The Commonwealth Matters. While you're there, please rate us. This is really helpful. Also, tell your friends about us. We believe that The Commonwealth Matters is an important resource of good ideas, policies, and perspectives that will help shape Kentucky to become the best version of itself. Thank you.